All right, let's get started. Welcome everyone to one of our most popular webinars, Accelerate Your Financial Statement Procedures. Before I start with the agenda today, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Handa and I lead the product marketing team at Data Snipper and I will be one of your hosts. Today, I will be talking to you about the key challenges we see in financial statement procedures and how implementing solutions like Financial Statement Suite can help you overcome these challenges while bringing efficiency and quality to your work. I will go over the most loved features of our community and will also shortly talk about the latest features and improvements we added to FSS with version 6. So if you're familiar with FSS already, you'll be very excited to see the new and improved FSS. And later on, my colleague Sangeeta will demonstrate the latest version of FSS for you. So joining today's session, I have with me Industry and product expert Sangeeta, before joining Data Snipper, she was an external auditor for several years, so she has an extensive knowledge of the use cases we will address today. During the live demo, she will guide you through the product and will answer any questions you may have, so feel free to use the Q&A or chat section of Zoom. Sangeeta, would you quickly like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Hande. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all online. Thank you so much for taking your time to attend this session. I'm Sangeeta Ramesh. I'm working as Transformation Manager at Data Snipper. As Hande mentioned, I was working as an external auditor before joining Data Snipper for eight years. And now I'm bridging the gap between the technology and the finance profession. And I do understand how valuable the time of the financial professionals are. So I'm looking forward to demo the financial statement suite in order to make sure how much time it can save, which can be focused on any other tasks. Thank you so much, Sagita. Super happy to have this session with you. So we actually have one of the largest audiences we see in our webinars, from experienced FSS users to people who will see FSS for the very first time. So if you would like to know more about the FSS after this session and get your company to use FSS, the fastest way to do is to reach out to our salespeople, of course. They'd be happy to chat with you more and show you a detailed demo with an in-depth Q&A session tailored to your firm. So you can reach out to us via the link you see on the slide, or I will be dropping the same link in the chat section soon. You can also scan the QR code and we'll lead you to the same link. But without further ado, let's start. So year by year, we see annual reports getting longer with more complexity. This means that auditing these reports almost feels like finding needles in a haystack. It's becoming more challenging to perform these procedures while making sure the financial statements are remaining accurate and high quality. The main pain points auditors experience when auditing these reports are manually calculating, searching, comparing financial statements losing valuable time due to the nature of these repetitive and menial tasks. And while dealing with this time pressure, it is also expected from auditors to adapt and re react to a constantly evolving regulatory environment. As you can imagine, overall, these obstacles can lead audit reports to be more prone to errors, lack documentation standards, and decrease in overall quality. Well, if these challenges sound familiar to you, we have good news. This is exactly where the financial statement suite comes in. FSS aims to improve efficiency and accuracy by replacing repetitive and manual tasks with intelligent automation. It helps to perform and document financial statement procedures while you stay in full control. Meaning every procedure that you will see in this live demo, FSS will provide suggestions and you will have the final decision to implement it or not. So now let's see our community favorites. So with mathematical accuracy, Data Snipper analyzes the document and adds suggestions of valid totals and errors. You can easily review the totals and mark them as validated. With internal consistency, you no longer need to scroll back and forth of the document. You can easily review the internal consistency with auto lookup and internal page matching. With prior year consistency, Data Snipper automatically compares two financial statements and searches and validates the corresponding amounts between the different years. With tick marks, you can quickly analyze the suggestions of valid totals or errors and place tick marks. This way of working will allow you to stay in full control. And finally, using version comparison, you can beat the version chaos 
Data Sniffer compares different versions of financial statements and automatically highlights the changes between versions. Well, overall, FSS will help you perform your financial statement procedures by three times faster, automate repetitive tasks while relying on your professional judgment, and drive standardization to increase overall quality and decrease turnaround time. Let's now quickly go over what's new with version 6. Super exciting, we have a new homepage, so all your work performed with FSS is now centralized in one location from where you can access all your financial statement reviews. FSS also automatically saves all your work performed, so you can quickly pick up where you left off without losing any progress. We have a new built-in calculator. This improved calculator allows you to perform complex calculations and ensure accuracy in assessing your financial statements. Next to our already existing auto sum function, users can now add, subtract, multiply, divide, and check for the percentage deviation between the two numbers. We have improved internal consistency. FSS will provide you deeper assurance in the check and balance is conducted automatically by the platform. And finally, we have an improved tick mark experience. So now Data Super offers a more simplified way to apply tick marks that will allow you to perform your checks and balances before any tick mark placement. Well, I'm very excited to see FSS in action. So I'll now leave the stage to Sangeeta so she can start it with the live demonstration. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy the demo. Yes, thank you, Hande. Let me quickly share my screen. Perfect. Oh. Okay, perfect. And a couple of points before I start with the demo. I uh, like we do see a few people have raised their hand. Unfortunately, due to the Zoom settings, uh, we cannot unmute you. But if you have any questions or concerns that you would like to communicate or flag, please feel free to use the Q&A section. We'll be more than happy to assist you from there. And also for those who are asking for training materials, it's more like a demo, so you can just sit back and enjoy the show. Uh, so there is no click along or there is no training materials involved. And uh, also just to quickly address, uh, I also have got a few questions uh, where they are very curious, like for those who are you already using financial statements, we, they are very curious to install version six. That's great. Uh, if that is the case, feel free to reach out to your point of contact within Data Sniffer and they will help you in installing the latest version for you. Perfect. So let's start. You should be able to access the financial statement suite uh, from your Excel workbook. And if you are seeing the financial statement suite icon within the data snipper add-in, it means you have it enabled. If not, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We can talk about the next step and uh, discuss to enable it for you. And now, if you just click on the financial statement suite icon, there will be a new window or a new home page that is very specific to the financial statement suite platform. And as an auditor, as an ex-auditor, the one thing that I've realized is there are times where we will be working on multiple clients at the same time, which leads to multiple financial statements review. In those instances, this homepage is very helpful because you can create project for each and every clients that you are currently reviewing. And with the help of search option, you can search for the project that you would like to take a look at, maybe example L'Oreal, and you can easily go through this project. And also with the new homepage, you also have an option to export this project or rename or delete these projects. Let's say if you want to send a financial statement review project to any of your colleagues to continue the review procedure or even for the reviewer to start the reviewing uh, of the work you performed, then you can just export the project and share it with them. So they no need to start from scratch. They can just continue from wherever you left. And same ways, if you are the other colleague who, are, who is receiving the financial statement review from half away, then you have an option to import the project where you can just start from wherever the other colleagues left. No need to start from scratch. For this example, I'm going to start with a new tick and tie procedure. So I'm going to click on start a new tick and tie and we have to give our project a title or a name. I'm currently reviewing the Aiden's financial statement. So I'm going to name my project as Aiden Annual Report Review 2020 and 2021. 
And the next step is to select the document. So we have to import our annual reports. It's no longer from the Excel. It, as the financial statement suite homepage is specific and a different platform, you need to import uh, the documents directly to the module. So I'm going to just click on select documents and let's say annual report version one, assuming we haven't received the version two yet. Similarly, prior year document. And in order to recognize the text or run OCR, it's completely up to you. If you expect your annual report to look very neat, structured and clean, then you can just proceed without running OCR. But if you're receiving the annual report in a bit poor quality or a scan document or somewhere handwritten text, then I would highly recommend you to run OCR. But for this use case, I'm just going to start tick and type without running the text recognition. So by clicking on static and time now, financial statement suite performs the three procedures that is mathematical accuracy, internal consistency, and prior year consistency check for us. It provides the suggestions on the accuracy and consistencies and also inaccuracies and inconsistencies that are noted. But at the end, it's always our responsibility in order to make sure we review those suggestions and apply our professional judgment and validate the results that are obtained by financial statement suite. Perfect. So to briefly explain uh, or take you through this window, you have the three check that has already been performed. Let's go to each and one of them in detail. And I'm going to shortly talk about versions and comments in a while and also the export option. And now with version six, we have a very fancy looking and advanced looking calculator where you can also perform advanced or complex calculation. It's not only limited to sum, as Hande was mentioning, you can also now subtract, multiply, divide, and also find percentages within your annual report. And as it is a multiple page document, you have an option to navigate between the pages. You can also zoom in, zoom out, rotate. And if you want to search for any key terms or keywords within your annual report, you can easily do that with the help of search panel. And you also have a small square flaggings where it's flagged mainly that there are few inaccuracies or inconsistencies that are noted within the entire annual report. Perfect. So now to start with, uh, let's start with mathematical accuracy and all the inaccuracies or the inconsistencies are listed in the left panel of your screen. And with the cross-referencing capabilities, you can just click one of them and it automatically takes you to the source. So with the cross-referencing capability, it's easy for you to direct or pinpoint to the place where the inaccuracy was noted. An important point to note in regard to the financial statement suite, all the totals and subtotals highlighted in blue are those totals and subtotals that are mathematically accurate. And all the totals and subtotals that are highlighted in red are suggested in red are those totals and subtotals that are mathematically inaccurate. And if you just hover over the total, the values is highlighted in yellow, which provides you with a better clarity on what is the composition of that total. And now in order to confirm that, if you just click on the value, there is a blue tick mark that is placed automatically, which actually flags that this total is mathematically accurate. And now if I just click on the red uh, suggestion, there is a red tick mark placed, which actually flags that this total is mathematically inaccurate. And if I just click on the tick mark, as you can see from our calculator icon, there is a detailed calculation uh, showing why there is a difference and what is the difference as well. In this case, the difference is minus 10,000. And also there is an auto-populated comment, which actually says that the total is different from the expected total. You can either retain this comment as it is, or you can also customize this as per your requirement. And in case if you want to change the color of the tick marks, considering this is mathematically accurate, you can easily do that. And if you want to remove the tick mark, you also have an option to remove it. Before I proceed, I'm going to quickly pause for any questions uh, that needs to be addressed at this point. So I'm com covering some questions, but, but I had a good question that we can maybe raise uh, and answer it live. What mm -hmm. kind of documents we can import in financial statement suite? Of course, a very good question. Uh, so with the financial statement suite, you can 
import any type of document, if you're receiving your annual reports of financial statements in Word document format or even in Excel format or plain text files, you can easily import it to your financial statement suite module. So basically all the file types or file formats that are supported by our core platform is also supported by our financial statement suite. Amazing, thank you so much. Perfect, thank you, Hande. So yes, let's proceed for the next one. And there might be few instances where the totals are not highlighted or not suggested. It is mainly due to the algorithm that is designed, but if there is a deviation more than 3%, in those instances, it doesn't suggest or highlight the totals or subtotals. It's also because it's quite not sure in case if it is missing any value while summing up or while uh, computing the total. So in those instances, it do not want to take any chances. That's the reason it just doesn't highlight or doesn't suggest anything. But not to worry, even in order to verify these uh, mathematical accuracy for these kind of totals, we can do it manually, but within the same window and with the help of our advanced calculator that is available. So in order to verify for this total, I'm going to just click on the calculator icon. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no presentation is complete without these small, small hang, uh, hangouts in between. Perfect. So if you click on the calculator, all you have to do is just draw a snip on these values. And just like a simple calculator, the handy calculator that you use, if you just click on equal to sign, there is the total that is mentioned or the total that is computed for you. And in this case, the total is pretty different because it's 5.1 million here, whereas the total computed is 5.3 million. And in order to flag this inaccuracy, if you just click on the value, you will get an option on which tick mark to place. So in this case, I'm going to select red tick mark because it is mathematically inaccurate. And also you can also leave a comment saying mathematical, mathematically inaccurate. Uh, Perfect, yes, mathematically inaccurate. So if I click outside, let me try it again. Perfect. Perfect, yeah, we have that. And also important point to note, as soon as you place the red tick mark or on the red suggestions, it automatically transferred from the suggestions to the list of findings. Even the manually added findings are also listed and logged. And I also I would say the icing on the cake here is, for instance, if you look at the list of inaccuracies that we note here, is there are most of them, the difference is just one. And these differences may be due to the rounding of errors. And if you're already expecting these kind of errors, and if you want to eliminate these trivial inaccuracies already, then you have an option to allow difference up to. And by just clicking on like, I'm assigning the value one, assuming there are rounding of errors. And if I click on apply filter, as you can see, the list has reduced and also all the suggestions that were in red are automatically turned into blue, which means any differences up to one will still be considered and flagged as mathematically accurate. And this depends upon client to client and also from professional judgment and also based on the risk assessment. And in terms of application of the tick mark, you have multiple ways of applying. One, you can either click on the value, there will be a tick mark automatically placed. And you can also apply it to the page that you're currently reviewing. So it is showing that there are 31 suggestions in this page. And if I just click on that, all the 31 suggestions or all the 31 tick marks are placed. And if I click on the drop down, there are three other ways like apply all the tick marks or only correct tick marks or only incorrect tick marks. And based on your professional judgment and review, you can choose any ways of applying the tick marks. So here, a very nice tip to know is that um, as per your organization's preference or depending on your methodology, you actually have the option to enable or disable the options for applying tick marks to the page. Yes, that's a good one. Thank you, Hande. So let me, I'm going to apply all the tick marks to the document because I would like to show you how the final output uh, looks like. 
So once it's been applied, we get a notification saying, yes, all the mathematical accuracy suggestions are processed. And also important one to note, I'm going to quickly go to my income statement. Perfect. Let's say the next step for you is also to perform a trial balance reconciliation or the lead sheet reconciliation. If you're doing so, you can create a custom tick mark. So let's say we have to reconcile this revenue balance with the trial balance. And if I click on the value, there is an option called custom tick mark. And if you click on that, you would see all list of custom tick mark that you have created within your system. Or you also have an option called add custom tick mark. You have to give your tick mark a name and the characters that you would like to use for the tick mark. And you have to classify it either it's correct or incorrect. And based on preview, if you create a custom tick mark, let's say I've already created one. So you should see within the list. And I have something called TV reconciliation. So if I use that tick mark for the revenue, the good thing is if I want to perform the same or if I want to add the same custom tick mark again, if I just click on the value, the custom tick mark is already placed in the main legend of the tick mark. So you can easily access it from here rather than going through the list again. So this is how uh, the custom tick mark is also enhanced with a new version where you can already see that in the main legend and you can pick it uh, directly from this legend. So here also super nice to mention is that you have the option to change the default tick marks into one of your custom tick marks at an organizational level. And this basically will help you strengthen your documentation and conform to your organization's documentation standards. Perfect. So next, uh, let's say next we have to calculate the percentage between uh, the revenue of current year and the prior year in order to validate if it's appropriate or not. And rather than doing that within the Excel, then you can easily do it with the help of the advanced calculator that we have here. So if you just click on percentage icon, you have to just select the two values. And as you can see, the 164%, which means the current year revenue has increased 164 times uh, the previous year. So with this, if you want to create a custom tick mark for this recalculation that you made, you can easily create and it will be visible within the main legend where you can apply and make sure you can complete the entire financial statement review process within the same window. So these, uh, this is mathematical accuracy. I'm going to quickly pause if there are any short or quick questions that can be answered now, or if it can wait till the end, you can also let me know, Hande. Let's wait until, until the end. Meanwhile, I'm covering uh, all the questions uh, in the chat, uh, but let's wait into, until the end. We can uh, go on with the demo. Perfect. Thank you, Hande, you're the best. <laughs> Perfect. So yes, let's go to the next check that is internal consistency. We have to make sure that the phase of the financial statement aligns with the respective notes and disclosures within the same financial statement. And that is what is done within the internal consistency check. And when you're trying to perform internal consistency without data snipper, like generally we would have had two copies of the same annual report because it's easy to go back and forth between the phase and between the respective notes and disclosures. And we have tried to replicate the same in here and very similar concepts in few things like in suggestions and also the inconsistencies that are listed in the left panel. And by just clicking on it, it automatically takes you to the respective source. And if I zoom in a little bit and the suggestions or the highlight is also very similar concept. All the blue suggestions are internally consistent and all the red suggestions are internally inconsistent. And if you just hover over it in the right screen, it will highlight the related value in yellow where it provides more clarity uh, to you on where to look for or if the whatever the internal consistency check performed is accurate or complete or not. And this also, this is a point where I would like to explain how internal consistency check is done because it also depends from financial statements to financial statements. The internal consistency check in order to perform that, it goes by note number. So in this instance, the revenue is note number two. So what financial statement suite module does is it will go to note number two and will try to find this exact value. 
And if it identifies or finds this value, then it suggests in blue, which actually uh, yeah, means which is internally consistent. And in case if it couldn't find this exact value, then it suggests in red, which means it is internally inconsistent. But there might be instances where you don't have any note numbers at all. In those instances, you have to do the internal consistency check manually, but it is still an easy way because it's within the same window and it also facilitates, assists you in that. For instance, this finance income, there are no notes number and that is the reason why there is no suggestion for this value. And if I just click on the value, there is something called references. So it will list out the result of this information that we are looking throughout the annual report. So in this case, we have twice within the page 118, and there is a small chain icon in order to link it or refer it. And if you just hover over on each page, it automatically takes you to the respective source within the right side of your screen. And by just clicking on the small chain icon, the internal consistency check has been referred. And then you have to select which tick mark, if it is consistent or inconsistent. And if I just select the blue tick mark, then there is a blue tick mark placed both on the face and also to the respective note and disclosure with the sequence number that these two are internally consistent. And even in this case, there are multiple note numbers. That is the reason why there is no suggestions or there are no highlights. But you can use the same approach. If you just click on the value, the reference will list out where this information was found and you can manually refer it as well. Any questions, Hande? Um, well, two points. I'm receiving a lot of questions about the pricing. Uh, our sales teams would love to have a chat with you. I dropped the link in the chat. I will do it uh, again, but feel free to go to our website and book a demo. Um, another question I thought it might be interesting to cover as well. Can you add multiple references to one value? Yes, that's a great question. Yes, you can add multiple references to one value. Let's take an example of same 1039, the finance income. There are two times the value was found and if you want to refer both of them to the one uh, balance then you can easily do that if you just click on the chain icon then you can easily refer all these three values within the one internal consistency check because sometimes what happens at least from my experience as an auditor the note uh, may have a breakdown of the value that is presented within the phase of the financial statement in those instances both the numbers even though they are not exactly the same they needs to be linked or referred to the same balance in those instances yeah feel free to yeah uh, use as many links or as many references or balances as possible to link it back to one value. Amazing. Thank you so much. Perfect. And uh, yeah, these are the important points uh, to consider while doing the internal consistency check. And uh, you also have an option to add manual uh, check manual references. Let's say you would like to add an internally consistent tick mark for this. And if you just click on that, there are references. But if you want to add a manual reference, you can also do that. All you have to do is just click on add manual reference and you have to select any of the value. And by just clicking on the value, there will be a link that is made and you can choose whichever tick mark because in this case, let's say it's a consistent tick mark. And if I just place the consistent tick mark, there is a tick mark both on the face and the respective notes and disclosure. So because sometimes what happens there is the rounding of errors between the face and the respective notes and disclosure. In those time, if you just want to add manually those links or those references, you can easily do that by just clicking on the value and clicking on add manual reference. And application of tick mark, very similar concept. You can apply it to the page or you can apply all the tick marks or only suggested or uh, correct tick marks or incorrect tick marks. Perfect. So I'm going to apply all tick marks to the document because I would like to show you how the final output looks like. We get a notification saying it's been performed or all the tick marks are placed. And also, if you would like to just apply all the correct tick marks and then further review incorrect tick marks, you can also do that.
perfect. So let's go to the next check that is prior year consistency check. Pretty straightforward. It will look for the prior year balance from the current year annual report with that of prior year audited annual report. And all the inconsistencies are listed in the left panel. And if you just click on it, it will automatically takes you to the respective part. And all the blue suggestions, red suggestions, very similar concept. And if you just hover over the blue suggestion, the related value within the prior year report is highlighted in yellow, which provides you more clarity on what is the source of this suggestion. And for the red, uh, yeah, which means it's inconsistent, you can either just place an inconsistent tick mark in order to flag it, or if you want to change it to consistence, because maybe sometimes the presentation might dip, differ on prior year, uh, note and the current year note. In those instances, if you want to flag it as correct, then you can also change the tick mark color. And uh, yeah, and if you want to add a manual reference, you can just click on the value and select whichever tick mark that you would like to place, either consistent or inconsistent, and leave a comment saying where it was found. And let's go to income statement to show you quickly how it looks. So these are the suggestions. And by just clicking on each of them, there is a PY tick mark placed on the current year financial statement and the related values are also highlighted in yellow. Any questions on prior year consistency check? Um, we have a question regarding the language. Is FSS able to read other languages than English? Yes, that's a good question. Yes, FSS is able to read other language, uh, other languages as well, other than English. Yes, it, we would support that as well. Thank you. And maybe one really mm -hmm. quick question about prior year. What if the previous and current year documents are different due to additional notes or disclosures? That's a good question. Uh, even though there are additional notes added to the current year, financial statement and even the, the note numbers are not in line or the sequence is different that's completely okay it doesn't matter until and unless it could find the year 2020 or 2021 the prior period and the values then uh, yeah there shouldn't be any problem it will perform the consistency check accurately thank you so much Sangeeta I'll cover the rest of the questions in the chat awesome thank you yeah. Perfect. So the next part, let's say, uh, yeah, application of tick mark, similar concept. I'm going to apply all tick marks to the document. Perfect. So we have it. Let's say we finished our first review. We sent this to the client and client sent us a revised version or the next version after 15 days. So once we have it, then we have something called version compare. In order to do that, there is an all version option. And if you click on that, these are the logs of versions which we are currently reviewing and which are already reviewed. And in order to create a new version log, you have to click on create new version and you have to choose the current year document. I'm going to import it, the version two. And if you have a restated prior year financial statement, you can also include that and just click on create version. The version compare is one of my favorite option as well because it performs three tasks. One of them is it transfers all your tick mark from the prior version to the current version. So you no need to start from scratch. And next it will highlight all the changes that happen between the versions in red and green, which provides you on more clarity on what are the changes. And if those changes are appropriate or not, you can validate from there. And also the third one, it will list out where the tick marks were not transferred. So at least now you know what are the checks or the what are the review procedure that review procedure that you need to perform on those values where the tick marks were not transferred. So let's quickly take a look at it. If you go to version compare, um, there will be a new tab. And as you can see, now we have a list where the tick marks are not transferred. I'm going to collapse it a bit. And as you can see, all the tick marks are automatically transferred and only the changes that are between the current version and the prior version are highlighted in green and red, which gives you more clarity. And in this instance, the mathematical accuracy tick mark has not been transferred because the value has changed. And in order to now apply it, you have to go to the mathematical accuracy tab and look for that and apply it from there. So let's see. Yeah. As you can see, there are just suggestions, no tick mark next to it, which means it's a new uh, thing that happened in this, the latest version that we received. 
And in order to apply the tick mark, I'm just going to apply all tick marks to the document. And as you can see, the incorrect tick marks is grayed out, which means we don't have any inaccuracies noted anymore. So this is like a flagging and you can just apply all tick marks to the document. And now it's a similar check that you need to perform for internal consistency and the prior year consistency as well. Perfect. So if I go to internal consistency, the tick marking option is highlighted or activated, which means we do have few flaggings that still needs to be reviewed and apply the tick marks. You can either directly go based on clicking on this suggestion, or you can apply all the tick marks to the document. And now we have to do a prior year consistency check. Let's quickly wait for us to confirm. And yeah, prior year consistency, it's grayed out, which means there are no changes in terms of prior year consistency check, and we can just move forward. And once we complete this, let's say you have to export it and send it to the client or also attach it in your audit documentation tool. And if I could just click on the comments option, these are the list of comments that are inserted within your annual report review. And these comments are not only uh, specific to the auto-generated one, even the manually inserted comments are also listed as part of the comment section. And within the export, we have an option to export all the apply tick marks and findings and also to add a summary page. I'm going to quickly export it to the PDF and save it here. Perfect, let's see how the exported version looks like. Okay, well, let me, perfect. So as you can see, now we have the exported version. I'm going to open the version quickly. Perfect, so if I go to my top page, the, there is a summary page which actually lists out wherever the inaccuracies or inconsistencies that were noted. And you also have a tick mark legend which explains what it each, each tick marks are. And we also have a tick mark legend for the custom tick mark that you would have created and generated. And also based on your PDF viewer, you will also have an option to look at all the comments or glance through all the comments that were inserted within the document. And by just clicking on the comment, it automatically takes you to the source where you can review uh, further. Or if you want to reply to the comment, you can just double click on that and you can amend it or customize it from here on. So this is financial statement suite where it performs the check and also allows you to export uh, the work that you performed and share it with your colleagues or even with the clients. Amazing. Thank you so much for the demonstration, Sangeeta. I'll let you quickly scan the questions. We had more questions than I anticipated. I tried to answer them all, but unfortunately due to the time, I wasn't able to. I'll quickly share my screen. Yes. And we can go over um, the next steps. But to quickly give you a recap, well, FSS can help you eliminate repetitive tasks with automation, as you can see, and improving efficiency and accuracy of your financial statement reviews. You'll have more time to investigate errors, improving the quality of your work, and you can stay innovative while performing and documenting financial statement procedures. So let's look at next steps. Well, if you're still interested in learning more about FSS, uh, we are super happy to chat with you. Um, I dropped the link in the chat, or you can also scan the QR code. I also received a lot of questions in the chat. I have Data Super, I have FSS. How can I get the latest version? Please reach out to your Data Super Customer Success Manager, and they will help you um, get the latest version. And also a lot of questions about the recording. The recording will be sent to all participants uh, shortly after the session ends, but it will also be available on our resources up at datasnipper.com. Um, thank you so much. If we have some time to cover questions, we can do so. Right. Uh, yes, I have one question, which quickly uh, I'm summarizing it. So they're asking with the version sets, version comparison, will the... Uh, custom tick mark will also be transferred from previous version to the current version. Yes, it will be transferred from the previous version to the current, current version. Even though it's custom tick mark, it will still be transferred until and unless there is no change in the value. 
And uh, the next question, can I compare current year financial statement in Excel and the PY financial statement in PDF using the tool? Yes, it's possible because once you import your financial statement in Excel, it will be converted in the background as a PDF within the financial statement suite module. So you should be able to uh, compare even though one is in Excel and one is in PDF, you should be able to do it. Um, Okay. Also, uh, very quickly, uh, drop a link in the chat if you want to read more about the new improvements of version six. Uh, feel free to read our latest blog. Here we will explain you what are the new features and improvements that come with a financial statement version six. Perfect. Does mathematical accuracy only work when importing Word documents or Excel too? I have tried both, but just wanted to clarify as my Excels weren't uh, read. Uh, yes, it actually works, the mathematical accuracy check, even with Word document in Excel. Uh, it's strange that if you are experiencing that it didn't work with the Excel, then please do raise it. Uh, yeah, we should uh, have a look at it, but also make sure to run OCR or recognize text because irrespective of the file type or the file format, until and unless it's able, like you're able to import it, you should be able to run the mathematical accuracy check. Uh, perfect. Maybe one final question and then we can wrap it up. Yes. Uh, to make, uh, okay, maybe the other question. Can the change in page numbers affect the comparison reason? Uh, that's a very good question, actually, because um, having the similar structure, I'm sorry about it, having a similar structure uh, is actually helpful. If it is changing very drastically, then I would say, yes, it might affect uh, the value. But if it is just the page number, because let's say the management letter uh, is page four rather than page five, in those instances, if, they, if it is slightly different, then I would expect it to work. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sangeeta. It was an amazing session. Very insightful. Thank you all so much for participating. We will have more of these sessions. We will cover all your questions. Maybe we should have extended a bit more. So that was good to know. Um, like I said, you'll see the next steps on the, on the screen. If you want to know more, reach out to us and we're happy to walk you through FSS once more. Uh, I wish you a great rest of your day and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.